Hi, and welcome to 700 Club Interactive. The amazing woman you just saw pictures of was Dee Dee Robertson, CBN founder Dr. Pat Robertson's beloved wife who passed away just yesterday. Those who knew Dee Dee loved her dearly. She was a woman of extraordinary faith who spent her life in service to God and to her family. Without Dee Dee, there would be no CBN. And this is the story of her remarkable life and enduring legacy. I have seen more than I ever dreamed I would see. I have done more than I ever dreamed I would do. And it's just been a very exciting life. And working for the Lord is an exciting thing to do. Following his leading and, and doing the things that he wants you to do. And that's exactly how Dee Dee Robertson lived her life. A devoted wife and mother of four children, she worked to spread the message of God's love throughout the world. She was a woman of many talents, and with an unassuming and steadfast manner, she served on the board of directors at both CBN and Physicians for Peace, and also the board of trustees at Regent University. But Dee Dee was best known as Pat Robertson's beloved wife since 1954. International Bible teacher Kay Arthur was a friend of Dee Dee's. What a woman. I realize that she played a major role in helping Pat by being a good wife. And a good wife is a helpmeet. And she was a helpmeet, a counterpart, a complementer, a completer to her husband. I love Dee Dee because she was honest, because there was no pretense with Dee Dee. And, uh, and when we were together, you know, I just saw that what you see is what you get with this woman. And um, she was not impressed with her position. She was just a good woman, a great woman. And I loved her. She was my friend. Pat often talked about how he cherished Dee Dee's wise counsel. She has a, a good Midwestern common sense uh, view of life. And uh, when I run something by her, she's usually pretty much right on in terms of what needs to be done or what shouldn't be done. So it's nice to have a wife you can pray with and work together with. Born Adelia Elmer in 1927, Dee Dee hailed from the Buckeye State. After earning her bachelor's degree in social administration at Ohio State University, she continued her education at Yale, where she earned a master's in nursing. It was there she also met a bright young law student by the name of Pat Robertson. Dee Dee remembers the first moment they met, there were sparks, real sparks, and a small fire. He came to an open house that the student nurses had and uh, I was trying to escape from someone else, and I said I had to work at the refreshment table, and I went down there, there was nothing I could do, so I tried to look busy, and my hair caught on fire, and Pat jumped up and put it out with his bare hands. And somehow the fire that he put out in my hair moved to my heart, and it's never left. As newlyweds, the couple started out in New York, Staten Island, it was during that time Pat had a dramatic encounter with God and gave his life to Jesus Christ. He left the business world and went into seminary in full-time ministry. He also had a vision for the future. So in 1959, Pat, Dee Dee, and their growing family left New York for Virginia. They started a venture in TV that before was unheard of, the Christian Broadcasting Network. At times, they would reminisce about their leap of faith. Well, thank you. It was like we were coming into the promised land. Not knowing what was going to happen next, but God, God sustained. God met every single need that we ever had. In the early days, she had a very visible role. She had her own show. She uh, was part of the production team. Kind of interesting being in the studio where dad's running camera, mom's on camera, <laughs> and there's nobody directing because we couldn't afford a director. And so it's just going straight through a switcher to air. And, and that, that was the television show that day. From 1961 to 1964, she hosted Lifeline, a 
weekly program about missionaries. Although Dee Dee's role was less visible than Pat's, Gordon says it was vital to the success of the ministry. If it weren't for mom, there wouldn't be a CBN, and I doubt there'd be a family. That's because Dee Dee believed her first priorities were as a wife and a mother. My mom has been a rock. I mean, she was a rock throughout our childhood. We could always, you know, dad had to travel a lot and, and he was doing the Lord's work. But my mom was always there for us as kids. And um, she's like a lioness with her cubs. You know, she's a defender of each one of us. And we knew mom was always there. And so that, um, that gives a great security to children. When I think of Dee Dee, I think of a wife, I think of a mother, a grandmother, a woman who was determined that she was going to keep that family together and cohesive and watch over them, and yet, in a sense, not dominate their lives. And my mother, there's so, she has so many virtues, but I think she has just been long-suffering. She's endured a lot. And she's been a woman of few words. She's, I've never heard her really complain or be, want to give up. I think that's, that's, maybe that's the word. She um, is enduring. Dee Dee loved family times, and she made sure she took time to plan them. And she was out with the kids. We had picnics and we did travel and uh, we took them all over the place. We went out to uh, uh, the Rocky Mountains. We went to Canada, uh, up into New England uh, with the children. They all in the, in the back seat of the car and us traveling around. But uh, it was fun. The family mostly remembers the special times she created around the holidays. She created a magical Christmas for us. And she always kept traditions. It's something I hope to pass on to my children, our traditions. And, and we have traditions at Christmas and tr traditions at Easter and, you know, birthday traditions. And that all came from mom. Year after year, Dee Dee celebrated the miracle of Christ's birth with the local community. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. She also joined Pat to share the wonder of Christmas with the TV audience. Peace, goodwill toward men throughout this world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. As important as Christ and family were to Dee Dee, she had other pursuits. She was an assistant professor of nursing at Tidewater Community College. From 1982 to 1990, she was appointed the principal U.S. delegate to the Inter-American Commission of Women. She earned numerous accolades as well, like the 1986 Christian Woman of the Year. In 1987 and 1988, she campaigned enthusiastically on behalf of her husband's presidential bid. And if that weren't enough, she oversaw the interior design of the entire CBN and Regent University complex. You see her signature in all the decoration. You see her signature in all the architecture and uh, the design, the layout, the plan of everything. In the midst of all that, Dee Dee's devotion and love for Pat never wavered. Terry Mewson, co-host of the 700 Club, says the Robertsons always showed a mutual love and respect for one another. That was especially true in the more challenging times, like in 1986 when Dee Dee was diagnosed with breast cancer. You know, Dee Dee went through some very difficult struggles in her health and issues over the years, and he had tremendous um, compassion for what she was going through. Um, a lesser man could have gotten very caught up in the bigness of the issues here and not been able to get to that place. But he watched her walk with strength through those places and had the greatest respect for her greatest love for her. You are. What was one of my fondest memories? I think it would be the two of them dancing, you know, at some of the, the hallmark anniversaries that we've had here that, you know, you could just see 
what it, what they were like when they first met each other. You know, that they, they just were very attached to each other. Pat and Dee Dee really were quite a remarkable couple. I saw many times Dee Dee standing and having his back in some difficult things that you know, he went through over the years, and there were plenty of them. I mean, you don't, you're not a voice in a culture without being attacked from every side you can imagine. And I saw in him a tremendous respect and regard for Dee Dee. She's been quite a quiet presence on this campus over the years, and I think that she was a great sounding board for Pat. You know, when you're, when you're the person at the top of an organization, Sometimes it's hard to find somebody who's going to be that objective sounding board for you. Dee Dee was that for Pat. They found a place of listening to each other and God through prayer. I've got to talk about my wife, Dee Dee, because when I have something that really is important, I, uh, I say, now, honey, let's you and me pray. You get a Bible, I get a Bible. Let's ask God if he'll give us a word. And, uh, he gives her a word, he gives me a word. And I said, what did God tell you? And then she shares and we seem to get God's guidance together. They would uh, pray over things together and come into agreement in prayer over things. Uh, and when dad hasn't followed her, her advice, he's lived to regret it. So he, he takes what she says and what she says in prayer very seriously. Dee Dee, like Pat, loved to study heart. God's word and made it a focal it point heart. of her life. For several decades, she hosted a weekly women's Bible study in her home. And that's what dad has needed beside him all these years, is a steadfast partner who continually read the Bible, studied the Bible, and then just, and she's not too concerned about herself. She's selfless. She loved the Word of God, and I saw that Dee Dee was her own woman. I saw that Dee Dee uh, knew the Word of God, loved the Word of God. In fact, she looked at me one day and she said, I want you to know that Pat and I don't always agree on everything. <laughs> and, uh, and I just appreciated her honesty. So we had that kind of an honest relationship. Dee Dee was also known for her wit and sense of humor. In fact, she was known to tease Pat often. I remember back when we were first married, I thought, oh, if I could just have a day alone with him. But that never happened. <laughs> now I have many days alone. I'm getting the answer to my prayers. So they were a beautiful couple together. God definitely knew when he put them together. Their oldest son, Tim, says that over the years, he watched his parents' love for one another grow even deeper. For us as kids to see that uh, you really do sort of grow fonder and, and they, they deferred more to one another and all those sort of good things. And uh, they certainly had a great relationship. You know, my mom really did provide a sense of, of strength and stability for us as children growing up. She sacrificed a lot for us, and we all saw it. She went through a lot because uh, you know, she's got this visionary husband who's off running around changing, you know, changing the world, and um, she's got four little kids home. <laughs> it was a pretty wild time for her, no doubt, but uh, she's been a rock. And that's, I think, what is unique about the two of them. They both were willing to submit themselves to God. And as they did that, their relationship blossomed, their parenting blossomed, and uh, maybe hopefully some of their kids blossomed as well. That was Pat and Dee Dee's prayer for their millions of spiritual children as well. In more than six decades of Christian ministry, it was their greatest joy to share with others what Christ had done in each of their lives. And I realized that my pride was making me harden my heart so that I didn't hear any. I, well, I was still hearing, but the day might come when I wouldn't, mm -hmm. and I didn't want that to happen. So I asked the Lord Jesus to come into my heart and really rule my whole life and become <laughs> Lord of my life. And that, that really point, was the day that Jesus was born in your heart. It was really it? was. There was a big change.
Well, Dee Dee Robertson, we honor you today. We thank you. For the, from those of us at CBN and the many who love this ministry, we thank you for your amazing leadership and amazing legacy. You know, Ashley, uh, being here at CBN a little over 20 years, wow. I don't know if I've ever been around a family, Gordon, Pat, and his mm -hmm. siblings, where a family spoke so lovingly, adoringly, and warmly about wow. their mom. It was such yeah. reverence and respect, mm -hmm. talking about her sense of humor, her amazing wisdom, and they just they just speak so sweetly of her. Yeah, it's wonderful. They really do. Yeah, and as you know, a young woman in the faith, it's it's really awesome to look to to someone yeah. like Dee Dee Robertson and just see what a true Proverbs 31 woman looks like. You know, she I kept hearing she was a rock. She was a rock, not only for Pat but for her children and essentially for CBN too. You know, she was she was the one of the co-founders of CBN. As Gordon said and as other people have said, there would be no CBN without Dee Dee. So I'm just very thankful for her legacy. I'm thankful for everything that she's done, not only for her family, but for CBN, because let's be honest, I mean, we wouldn't be sitting uh, here if it wasn't for her and humbling. Pat, you know, just really tag teaming. You know, I've heard Gordon say before that they, they were such an amazing team. Mm -hmm. And wow. what And a it was evident being around them. Yeah. Sure. And what a beautiful picture of what a biblical marriage looks like, a partnership, yeah. a team, equals, loving one another, supporting one another. I just, I I'm love it. I'm glad you said that because, you know, Pat Robertson to many people is a spiritual mentor, but we've also been able to see he and his wife over many decades walk together, partner together, and that has taught many of us just as much. It's been a beautiful yeah, relationship. Definitely. Well, 13-year-old Sangeeta tried to fight off her attacker, but he was too strong. For six months, he violated her again and again. And soon, she began to blame herself for the rapes. And before long, her parents did as well. I woke up every morning and worshiped idols that were in my home. As a young girl, Sangeeta Sharma just accepted the tenets and practices of Hinduism and her place as the daughter of a Hindu priest. Like, this is who I am. I am a leader of Hindu worship, and this is uh, what I need to do. This is my purpose in life. That purpose came with expectations of perfection and purity. Anything less brought swift consequences from her father. He would discipline us physically and my mom. It was a really confusing time of like who my dad was to us. More confusion and pain would follow, but not from her dad. When Sangeeta was 13, a friend came over to play, bringing with her an older boy from the neighborhood. Then, when Sangeeta went to the bathroom, he followed her in and locked the door behind him. I asked him, what are you doing? And uh, I don't remember what he said, but uh, he, he grabbed my pants and took them off. And I was trying to fight back. And I ended up in the floor, and he ended up raping me. Afterwards, the boy told her something that cut her to her core. Telling me that I wasn't a virgin anymore and that no one would marry me. I believed the lies that he told me, and I was afraid to tell my parents. The attacks would continue for six months, and with them, mounting guilt and shame. How could this happen to me, and how did my life become like this? Like, I kind of blamed myself. Finally, her parents put the pieces together and realized the two had been having sex. When confronted, Sangeeta told them what happened. But when the boy insisted it was consensual, they believed him. And I felt betrayed like a, a strong betrayal that the people that celebrated my birthday every year are not who they say they are. Um, and I felt like I couldn't trust anybody, that it was all a sham. Soon after, Sangeeta's mother took the children and left her husband and the abuse behind. But for Sangeeta, the pain didn't go away. The biggest one was the nightmares and the flashbacks. And when it came out, it was really really traumatic, really bad, and there was no one for me to talk to or go to. At 14, she started cutting. I was like impure, unworthy, and like unholy. I hated myself. I hated what happened to me, and I couldn't change it. I didn't even think God would want me. Then a friend introduced her to marijuana that quickly became a daily coping ritual. Soon after, she ran away from home and found she could exchange sex for drugs and shelter. 
Over the next 10 years, she would move in and out of drug houses, never feeling she had any future at all. Well, my life is wasted. There's nothing to live for, so I might as well just, you know, do drugs. And if people are going to rape me anyways, I might as well make money off of it. The constant drug abuse and episodes of PTSD had Sangeeta longing for death. My mental health was um, deteriorating to a point where I was in and out of the hospital in the psychiatric ward. So it got to a point where I felt like I was nearing death and actually um, die, like killing myself. But something always kept her from taking her life. So I had a small spark of hope that one day I would be talking to people about sexual abuse and about trauma and addiction that there's more to this life than what I'm living in and that I don't have to live this way. I just, I just felt stuck and I didn't know how to get out. Then, in September of 2012, Sangeeta was at her boyfriend's house watching YouTube videos when a video popped up that caught her attention, a story about a young boy who had died, gone to heaven, and met Jesus. I had tears just falling down my face, and I was just listening to every single word that was being said. There was Gordon Robertson, and he kind of talked about, if you think God hates you or he's angry at you, I'm here to tell you that he's not, that he loves you so much that he gave his one and only son. And he reaches down to you where you are. He loves you where you are for who you are. And he loves you so much, he won't leave you there. He wants to change you so that you can be with him. I wanted what he said, and he said it was available to me, so I was going to pray that prayer. And so I prayed with everything I had, with every fiber of my being, and with all of my heart. Sangeeta says for the first time in her life, she felt no condemnation and no shame, only God's love and forgiveness. And in that moment, I in that room, I felt like a shift in that room. I felt like the darkness just went behind me and in front of me was light. And I knew, I knew firmly that he was real, that he was the real God and that there was no other God. Sangeeta received help for her drug addiction and started seeing a Christian counselor. She began reading her Bible and learning more about Jesus. He would show me a piece of my past that he wanted to talk to me about and speak truth over. You know, things like, I was never alone. I was never rejected. Through her testimony, Sangeeta's mother and other family members have given their lives to Christ. Today, she is continuing to help others who were lost in addiction and abuse, pointing them towards the one true God. Jesus has given me life. Um, he's given me an identity, uh, which means that I am no longer rejected. I'm his beloved child and that he will never leave me or forsake me. Wow, hear that truth today. Truth, it is absolute truth that Sangeeta shares with us all today. And I underline that God will never leave you or forsake you. You know, in life, we go through many things that create heartbreak, we have a lot of sorrow, PTSD from trauma from our past, things that have happened to us, like you just saw in Sangeeta's story. And sometimes the, the storms of life are just so much, too much sometimes that we can't even bear it. But here's the beautiful thing. Jesus bore it all for us on the cross. Everything that you're going through, he dealt with on the cross. Whatever pit you're in right now, and it could be the darkest pit of your life, and there seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel. Friend, I'm here to encourage you today that there is always light at the end of the tunnel, and that light has a name, and his name is Jesus. In this life, we will have trouble. That's what Jesus himself said when he was here on this earth. He told his disciples, you will face trouble, but be of good cheer because I have overcome it all. Take that today, friend. If you're like Sangeeta and you honestly have never really given God a chance, given Jesus a chance, no one's ever told you that God loves you, hear that today. Receive it in your heart today that God 
loves you. He's not angry with you. He's not disappointed with you. He loves you with an everlasting love, so much so that he doesn't want to be without you. And we see that because he sent his son, Jesus, to die on a cross for you and me so that we can have a redeeming, redemptive relationship with him. And all we have to do is believe in Jesus. If we ask Jesus into our heart, we are automatically brought into an intimate relationship with our creator. So if that's you today, if you wanna invite Jesus into your life like never before, pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, I cry out to you. Jesus, I want you to come into my life. Transform me from the inside out. Make me new. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that you rose three days later. And that same resurrection power now lives inside of me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. Today, I make you Lord of my life. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Friend, if you just prayed that prayer with me, please give us a call at 1-800-700-7000. Tell somebody that you just gave your life to Jesus. We have some amazing free resources that are going to help you on this new faith journey. Andrew. Thank you, Ashley. Beautiful story. Beautiful story. We leave you today with a favorite verse of Dee Dee Robertson, who we honored at the beginning of this program. It's Philippians chapter 4. Verse 19, and it is certainly one worth remembering. And my God shall provide all your needs for according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.